All right. Let's give the Lord some praise and worship. One more time. Let's give the Lord some praise and worship. You know, I, I've learned this about praise. That's good. That's it. You know what that is? We're just declaring war today on the devil. It's like, we're coming. We're coming. Right? Um, and, you know, so when we're talking about, you know, the joy of the Lord and, you know, I, I would say we are in a war. And there's a war that's trying to conquer our emotions. And, and I'll say this, people are losing. Right now we have more suicides than ever. A million suicides a year in America. Like we're like dying. And it's not that we're dying, we're under such oppression that we feel the only way out is to kill the pain. Maybe I could kill me and the pain would just go away. We're in war. And, and if we don't fight, you lose. Right? And, and what we're going to be doing in this Christmas season, we're not going to be pay, playing patty cake church. We're going to go to war for souls. And people are hurting out there and they need an answer. They don't need Santa Claus. Like, you know when I said Santa Claus right now, someone just got offended. Like, don't, say, don't talk about Santa Claus. Me and Santa Claus are tight. Stop it. And me and Rudolph are real tight, you know. And, and maybe you are more tight with Santa Claus and with Rudolph than Jesus. Because, now, the reason I say that, because maybe there's more worship and those songs that we're singing than singing worship songs to the Lord. You know, we're eliminating Silent Night. We're eliminating Joy to the World. We're eliminating all the songs that have to do with Christmas is all about. And we're replacing them with fun little nursery rhymes. And then we're wondering why we have no ammunition to fight against the depression and the discouragement and the anxiety and the temptation and the struggle. Because there's only one name that you could glorify that could set you free and set your family free and give you eternal life. It's the name of Jesus. So we're going to be intentional and just think about this, about Christmas. Christmas is the biggest marketing campaign in the world every year. Christmas is getting bigger and bigger every single year. But I'm going to tell you something about Christmas. It's not just a marketing campaign for companies. It's a marketing campaign from heaven to earth to let everybody know every year my son came. He came, God... And Emmanuel, God in the flesh, came to save mankind. Come on, they got Christ on their lips. They, come on, they're saying Christ mass. Christ mass. Just think, thinking about this. People are mentioning Christ. You know what I think? It's a good time to go ahead and mention it. You're almost being politically correct. They're mentioning it. Mention Christ. Let's make Christmas about Christ. This is all I'm saying. We're going to be intentional. It's four things we're doing. Some say four. One thing we're going to do is worship on Christmas. And it's said, Pastor, what do, you mean, what do you mean by that? Let's make this the biggest Christmas we've ever had at, at the Way World Outreach. You know why I said that? Because some of you guys don't. This is what happens crazy on Christmas. Our attendance drops. Jesus, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. God's put it on the calendar, and we're going AWOL. You have a birthday party, and people don't show up, you're all offended. We're having a birthday party celebrating the birth of our Savior. Come on, if anybody should be excited, it should be the church. We should come and worship and celebrate and give gratitude to God. Now, we're gonna have we're, we're gonna have worship services, especially for Christmas all month long. But we're gonna have on the 19th, someone said 19th, we're gonna have a Christmas production. Don't be don't be a target. 
divine little presence. Be in the house of God, worshiping your Lord. Come on, amen, come on. Let's clap a little. Come on, I'm going to worship God. We're going to worship God this Christmas. Next year is going to be crazy. We're going to find out who are the true worshipers. Next year, Christmas is on Sunday. So are you going to be busy unwrapping little presents? Or are you going to be in here doing warfare and glorifying the King of kings, the Lord of lords? That's next year. We're going to warm up for next year showing up to these services. So someone say 19th. 19th, we're going to have our Christmas production, 9 and 11. It's going to be awesome. So this is number one, what you're going to do. Come attend. Let's worship together. There's joy being in the house of the Lord. Right? Number two thing we're going to do is bring someone to the source of joy. Bring someone to Jesus. Be intentional. You used to bring people to your parties. Can you bring a person to a church? When they're, you know crazy? People want to come to church on Christmas and Thanksgiving. They're, I'm sorry. Yeah, Thanksgiving too. I was, I was just checking. Oh, they go Easter too. You're right, man. Another one, Easter. It's true. So Easter and Thanksgiving. Invite someone. Someone say bring somebody. The Bible says there's joy in he- more joy in heaven for one sinner that repents than the 99 just stay there. What he's saying is, will we make heaven happy? And I guarantee you that you bring someone to Jesus this Christmas. This year was a successful year. Come on. This was a Someone say, and strong. Say with me. And strong. Number three, serve. Serve in one of our, serve within our outreaches, serve in the church. F- plan to serve one hour, do something. Try to be intentional about serving this Christmas. Okay, so 19th, we're doing our prayers for the 9 and 11 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, we are giving away 3,000 gifts to those in our city that won't have a Christmas. They're going to come to the house of God. We need a lot of workers. Come on. I'll, someone say, I'll serve. Someone say, I'll serve. And you know what you're doing is sharing the joy of the Lord. Someone say share. And when you're serving, you're sharing. Okay? So the 19th, so, but the 18th, the day before that, we're going to go to five of the, the tough, tough apartment complexes in San Bernardino. And we're going to bring gifts and church and worship to the hood. Come on. We're gonna, that's going to be the 18th. I'm kind of going backwards. On the 17th, we got the young adults from 5 to 8 o'clock at night, this is what they're doing. They're going to hit the streets, and they're going to do an outreach, reaching out to the homeless in our community. So 17th, 18th, 19th, I'm giving you a lot of opportunities. The 20th, someone say 20th. We're not playing. We're going after thousands of souls. We're going to war. We're not going to let this big marketing campaign from heaven pass us up. You're only going to have so many Christmases. I know this. I'm going to have less Christmases in my future than I had in my past. I'm going to make every one of them count. Come on. It's going to be about Jesus this year. Okay, so, so um, the 20th, this is what we're doing. We're partnering up with a, with, a, with a news company. It's going to be live on TV. We're going to be live on TV at 6 o'clock in the morning. And this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to have all our ministries here. We're going to have a drive through gift giveaway. This is what we're going to do. We're going to be giving $35 gift cards to little kids that need just little, they need money so they could go to Target and buy themselves something. So the family's going to come. They're going to be allowed four per car. And they're going to come to that at 6 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to be all over the news. And this is going to be the location that we're going to be giving away little gift cards to little boys and little girls so they can have some Christmas too. Come on. That's going to be happening here. So on the 12th, on the 12th, no, the 11th and 12th, I, I'm all over the place. But we got so many opportunities. You better look at your, your bulletin. We don't have bulletins anymore, but look at somewhere. Look on, online, right? But, but this is what we're doing. On the 12th, we are going, oh, this is, this is really crazy. It's all over. Um, on, the, on, on, on what is it? No, 12th. Yeah, 12th. 12th. That's next, this weekend coming up. Next weekend. On, well, the 11th and 12th, we are doing an outreach in Tijuana, Mexico. And, and we're crossing the borders. 
And this is what we did. We already snuck in the toys. I'm telling you, it's hard to get the toys in. It's hard to get anything in. But we got the 800 toys over there, and we're going to orphanages. We're going to the streets, and we're going to bring little boys and little girls. Come on, they're going to come to the house of God for the first time. They're going to hear a message about Jesus Christ, and their moms and dads and family are going to get saved in TJ. So if you want to go on a mission trip, you can. And then the 22nd, that's Wednesday night. Someone say Wednesday night. We're going to have our children and youth production. They're going to worship God. And we're going to be here just worshiping God with them. It's going to be an amazing day. The 24th is Christmas Eve. We're going to come and worship God. You're going to, we'll give you Christmas off. Jesus, thank you for giving us Christmas on us. And, and on, the, on the 26th, we're going to come back to the house of God the last Sunday of the year. And we're going to end this year strong, going with some momentum into 2022. Come on, anybody going to be here with me? On, come on, the sec, last Sunday of the month worshiping. So someone say, we're attending. Someone say, we're attending. We're serving. We're bringing somebody. And the fourth thing we're doing is bringing an offering. Someone say, a gift. Just think about this. If it was your birthday and everybody got gifts but you, that'd be kind of messed up. Let's go ahead and let's honor God. And, and, and it's okay to give gifts for everybody else, but how much stress do we go through trying to find the right gift for everybody? And you know what happens with those gifts? They break them. They lose them. And they trade them in for what they really want. <laughs> they forget. And you're all stressed out. And how crazy that we'd be thinking about the perfect gift for everybody else and not thinking about the perfect gift that I could give the Lord. Amen. Let's bring an offering. Let's end this year with attendance being stronger than ever has. Let's end this year, come on, with the biggest gifts we've ever given. Let's make this, come on, serve. And let's end this year with solid momentum going into 2022. Come on, how many are with me? Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you guys so much. I got my little grandson here. And he's here. I'll tell you why. He has issues like all of us. I'll tell you what his issue is. He's up here because when he saw me coming up here, he put his arms out because he wants to be here. And if I don't take him, he'll start crying over there. He said, oh, Pastor, why would he start crying? Because he wants his way. And you know what he wants? Happiness. And right now, being on the stage makes him happy. Right? It makes him happy. And I'm happy when he's happy. I love it, right? So, but I want you to get this. Today we're going to be talking about, we're doing a new series, is giving the gift of joy. And we're going to be talking about happiness, true happiness, and joy. But I want you to understand this. We're coming against the spirit of depression, anxiety, fear, anger, hopelessness. And I pray that you get set free from those emotions and get set free from those demons today. We're going to be talking about this and we're going to war. Someone say going to war. So Xander, he's awesome. But as soon as he was born, he's on a pursuit. And you know what his pursuit is? Happiness. And we're doing everything we can to make him happy. But it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's out of control. Actually, the other day I went over his house and he must think I'm his age. You know, because he, he's, he's just, he, he had me, he, he got me to do stuff. And the thing he got me to do is pick him up and throw him up, throw him and just bring him back to ground and pick him up and throw him. I'm telling you, I got six packs now. Because this for a half hour, he won't stop. Uh, uh, more, more, more. He knows sign language, so he goes, he goes, more, more, more. And he laughs. So I can't get away. Because he thinks my, his whole, my, his, the whole world revolves around him. About his happiness, and right now it does. 
So I pick him up. It's just a, so I had to sneak out of the house because last time I, I tried to get out, he started crying. You know why? Because you aren't making me happy. And I tell you this, we're all in pursuit of happiness. And I could pick him up and drop him off and pick him up and drop him off and buy him everything he wants. But until he has Jesus Christ, as he gets older, it won't be me he's looking for joy from. It could be something else. But I praise Jesus Christ when it's all said and done. Right? I love him. And I'll tell you this. This is what I'm going to tell you. I love him and I'll do everything I can to make him happy. Right, boy? I love you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Love you. He's a good boy. Now, I'll do everything I can to make him because I love him. And I'm going to tell you something about Jesus. He'll do everything that he can to make you happy because he loves you. And I pray, we're not offering you religion. We're offering you a relationship that can make you whole. And I pray that today you just open your heart. Even if you're depressed as a Christian, you start saying, I'm not going to accept that anymore. I'm not going to be depressed anymore. I'm not going to be full of anxiety anymore. I'm not going to be full of fear anymore. If there's another option, I'll take that one. Come on. Joy is an option. Peace is an option. Freedom is an option. Give God just one more praise. The source of joy. The source of joy. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this service and as we go through these scriptures in the next 20, 30 minutes, I'm asking you, Lord, to help us see the truth and get us set, set us free from the lies. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You guys are awesome. So we're going to be talking about today real quick, three facts about the pursuit of of happiness. Say it with me. The pursuit of happiness. Fact number one, everyone wants to be happy. We're all born with a desire to be happy. I just talked about Xander. From the moment we are born, we begin a search and a pursuit of happiness. And this is the problem. And I'm going to tell you the problem right at the front. Without God, you're not going to find it. You're going to find temporary happiness, temporary relief. But the ache and the pain and the loneliness and the emptiness will be deep inside of you because it has roots. We're searching for happiness, but we can't find it. There's a great scripture in Romans 3.16 and 17 that describes the condition of every single person apart from Christ. Every single person that does not have a relationship with God is experiencing this cycle. In Romans 3.16 it says this, destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. The problem, we can't find it. We can't find the joy. We can't find the peace. But we're on a pursuit. And since, and for some of you here for the first time, I'm going to tell you something. There's God and there's a devil. And the devil is a decoy. And his job is to do this offer you things and keep you busy searching for joy, searching for happiness, searching for peace in all the wrong places. You could waste your whole life looking to be happy and end up empty and suicidal and pass that depression onto your children. Because if you don't get a parent, you're going to give them an inheritance of depression, bondage, and torment. We're here to find the true source of joy and happiness. So, Pastor, we're born with this pursuit? Yes. It's so perfect. God has set us up because it doesn't matter what you try. 
It's going to leave you disappointed. They're going to they're going to betray you. They're going to hurt you. It's not going to end the way you thought it was going to end. That's a fact. So after you've tried everything, God is going to speak to you and say, you've searched everywhere. How about me? And some of you are at the end of your search. God brought you here because you have everything this world has to offer. Or maybe you're trying to get something and you're thinking, if I get that thing, I will be happy. And God is saying, no, you won't. You'll be happy for a moment, but you'll never be complete. You'll never be whole, and you'll never have peace. You'll never have a good night's sleep. Something is missing in your life, and it's not 20 chicken McNuggets. You say, Pastor, why'd you say that? Because some of you think, actually, there's emptiness inside of you, and you're thinking, if I just go to get McDonald's and get 20 chicken McNuggets with a little, uh, with a little sauce and fries, that will solve my problem with a large Coke. You're still empty. Destruction means I always follow them. See, we are searching for happiness in all the wrong places. None of these decoys provide long-lasting happiness. We can't depend on, on, the, on outside things to make us happy on the inside. We will never truly be happy living a life from the outside in. Your joy must be found and it must be centered from the inside out. No one is in charge of my joy. No one can take away my joy. Because my joy is not in a thing. My joy is not in my house. My joy is not in my car. My joy is not in my accomplishments. My joy is in a person, and his name is Jesus. And you can have it. It's for real. Look what the Bible says in 1 John 2. It says this, do not love the world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, do you not love you do not have the love of the Father in you. What he's saying is, the world, the devil's offering you things to make you happy. And either you're going to the world for your happiness and your joy and your contentment and your satisfaction, or you're going to God. You'll go to the thing that you love. There's some people in this room, you love lust. You love drugs. You love your pride. You love your adultery. You love it because it's an escape to you. But the reality is, though you love it, it's destroying your life. It's destroying your integrity. It's destroying your honor. It's destroying your confidence. It's destroying your faith. It's destroying your family. And you're realizing, I'm getting a little pleasure, but in the long run, I'm losing. And we've all done it. So there's nobody better than nobody up, up in here. It's just, it's not a shame to have done it. It's a shame to continue doing it when God is making you a better offer. Come on, get some joy from the Lord. Look at this. For the world, someone say the world, offers you only a craving for physical pleasure. Pleasure. Lust. Sex. A craving for everything we see. I want it. I want it. I want it. A pride in our achievements, possessions, fame. These are not from the Father, but, from, but are from the world. This world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does, does what pleases God will live Forever, And I'm telling you this, God is not trying to just give you eternal life. He's trying to give you a quality of life. And I'm giving you some good news. And I'm preaching this passionately because there's someone here in war. We're fighting for your future. We're fighting for your mental health. We're fighting for your children. We're fighting for your marriage. And if you don't come to the source, 
misery and destruction will follow. It will always end in a miserable place. So what are we looking for for happiness? Money. You know, this week, Bitcoin is down. For those that are investors, you're happy when it's going up. You're smiling, oh my God, this is a great day. What happened? My Bitcoin's up. But when your Bitcoin's down, you're all depressed. I don't know what to do. Should I sell my Bitcoin? Should I hold it? Ah! Because when you depend on money, it's an outside thing. Sometimes the money's there. Sometimes the money's not there. And this is what I realized. The people that have a lot of money realize this. I thought the money was going to satisfy me, but I'm still empty. I'm still lost. I'm still broken. I need something more than the money. There's certain things that money can't buy. And the things that money can't buy are eternal life, salvation, peace, joy. And you can only get that from the Lord. What's another place we go? Purchase things. But things break down, they go obsolete, they lose their luster. You know, I grew up in the 80s. We had cell phones too. Don't you think we did it? They were just a little bigger, that's all. They were on this big. And only the pimps had them in their cars, in their big Cadillacs. But it, everything goes obsolete, and it's going obsolete faster, and it's breaking faster. Relationships. I'm going to get my joy, my joy in relationship. Yeah, right. People will let us down because they're imperfect. You could be trading in boyfriends, husbands, wives, all you want. The issue is inside of you. It's not outside of you. Physical enhancements. No matter how much plastic surgery we get, we're still getting old. You're not going to trick your body on the outside. You're looking younger, but on the inside, come on, you're, you're still old. And maybe you don't have the money for plastic surgery, but you do have a drastic makeover on Instagram and Facebook through the apps. You take 20 years off your life. Real quick, you do plastic surgery right there, boom, shorter nose, bigger lips, 20 pounds off, boom, that's me right there. And then you put that out there like it's really you. Are you happy now? No, you're not. Careers. Many regret sacrificing their whole lives for a career because they've sacrificed God, they've sacrificed their family, they've sacrificed their purpose they're for the pursuit of climbing a ladder. Entertainment. All movies, sports, gambling, hobbies only provide short-term distractions, but they don't have the ability to provide peace, joy, and love in our lives. Some of you guys are great fans of your team for that rush every single weekend. But the truth is your team's not always going to win. And they're going to lose. I can't wait for Sunday. I can't wait for Monday night football. I just can't wait because that's my source of joy. Until they start losing and you start cussing right there at home. So you start firing the coach, everybody. I'm in control here. They should have did this move. But all that stuff, when it's all said and done, is gone. Lust. Lust is the bottomless pit of misery. It's dark. It'll lead to depression. And it's an open door to the devil. Your eyes will never be satisfied. I don't care how much porn you look at. It's just never going to satisfy you. Lust will leave you bankrupt spiritually. Dark in your soul. And a slave to a condition. I went to Palm Springs um, yesterday. And we were there. And I, I took a walk. And I was in an industrial area. And while I walked, I didn't realize. We usually drive through that. I drive through those businesses. I don't see it. But this time I took a walk to get my car. I left it somewhere. And I was going to get my car. And as I took a walk, I saw some of the businesses. Some of these businesses were promoting a pursuit or a false pursuit of happiness. I saw a business in the middle of an industrial park, topless dancers. And there were cars in front. I could see some of the young ladies getting out of their car, ready to strip for the pleasure of a man that's empty and trying to be happy. 
I saw right next to it, adult bookstore. And then I saw a 20 some year old young man in the front and I could see the anxiety. He had, a, he had a black mask on. He's trying to get in, but I think they're only letting a certain amount of people in at a time. And he's wearing a real dark, I mean, he's all blacked out. I think part of it, he's not scared of COVID. He just don't want to be seen. He's trying to get in. Someone let me in. And I guarantee you this, he's doing it secretly. Trying to find happiness. Right across the street, was a, was a distribution center, not distribution center, uh, a, 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 of marijuana. What do you call those things? Dispensary. Th that's where you go and you, you act a little depressed and they, and they have a quack doctor that signs you off. So you get a little weed. And some of you right now, I'm telling you, you be, because you keep going to the weed, you can't get the joy of the Lord. Because you love the weed so much, you're never going to have true joy in your life. you got to have faith right now. I'm not saying you're better or worse than any one of us. Because every single one of us have been pursuing something in our lives that doesn't bring us joy. But it gives us temporary relief. But there's a God that wants to give you, come on, eternal freedom. He wants to give you a new life. And he wants to become your source. Jesus is not a dope dealer. He's a hope and joy dealer. And when you get the hope and you get the joy of the Lord, come on, you can walk into any hood and just walk in there and say, I know all you guys need what I got. I got some joy that have sent me. I got some good stuff that you've been looking for. I got it right. Come on, right here. It's Jesus. Is there anybody confident that Jesus is the answer? And some of us, it is drugs. And drugs only lead to death, addiction, destruction, loss, mental illness, suicide, physical illness, prison, poverty, death, and hell. Maybe it's fame. You know, there's a, there's a, you guys know Angela Jolie. She says this, I don't know where to put myself. I was raised in a place where if you have fame and money and you're decent looking and have the ability to work in this industry, you have everything in the world. And she says, then you attain those things and realize you still couldn't be more empty. I didn't know where to put myself. Kara Delavine said this. She's a famous Model, she said this. She so Guardian, she wrote an article, she gave an article in Guardian in, in September 2017 that becoming a famous model hasn't magically made her depression disappear. So many of my friends would say, how can you feel like that? But you're, but you're so lucky. I'd be like, and, and I'd be like, I know. Trust me, I know. I know I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I understand all of these things. I wish I could appreciate it. There's just something dark within me I can't seem to shake. Fact number two, the world's depressed. In Psalm 32, 10, it says this, many are the sorrows of the sinful. Many are the sorrows of the sinful. What that means, what is a sinner? A person that's pursuing happiness apart from God. And we've all done it. But this is what it leads to. Much sorrow, but loving kindness will be all around the man who trusts in the Lord. Look at the verse 11. Be glad in the Lord and be full of joy. You who are right with God, sing for joy all you who are, who are pure in heart. This, there's a secret here. It says this. Many of the sorrows are joyful, but it says this. But, but this it says, be glad in the Lord and be full of joy. All I'm saying is this. The joy you're looking for is in the Lord. I'm not offering religion. I'm telling you, Jesus is for real. 
There's people, come on, there's people who have testimonies. They came here suicidal and they got set free. And they, come on, they traded in their depression. They traded in their anxiety. They traded in their fear. And what they got was the fullness of joy of the Lord. God, I want Christians, receive the joy of the Lord. It's your inheritance. God wants you overflowing with joy. Stats. These are true. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the U.S. Affecting 40 million adults in the United States age 18 and older. Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide. Almost 75% of people with mental disorders remain untreated in the U.S. Major depression is on the rise among Americans for all age groups, but is rising fastest among teens and young adults. Wow. Why teens and young adults? Because this is what happened. Parents never overcame it. So the kids are just getting an inheritance. The anger, the emptiness, the loss, they have no spiritual inheritance. We got to overcome this. Come on, it's a battle, but we're going to overcome this with Jesus Christ. You know, there's one more quote I want to make, but Billie, Billie Eilish, she said this, seeing that someone else feels just as horrible as you do is a comfort. Kids use my songs as a hug. Billie Eilish told Rolling Stone in February 2019, on writing music that people are struggling can resonate with. Songs about being depressed or suicidal or, complete or completely just against yourself. Some adults think that's bad, but I feel that seeing that someone else feels just as horrible as you do is a comfort. It's a good feeling it's someone to scream with. And I don't, I said, Pastor, what are you, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't blame Billie Eilish. She only knows depression. She only knows suicidal thoughts. And she's singing from her heart. And she said, it's just good to know that someone's in the same pit as me. But I, if I saw Billie, I said, Billie, there's another story you could tell. That's not the best story. There's a comfort that you could be set free from that suicidal thought and that darkness that's tormenting you day and night. And you could be used to help these young people find the solution and the source of joy, which is Jesus Christ. Come on, give God some praise. And we'll end it with this. Fact number three, God is the only source of true happiness and joy. In Romans 15, 3, 13, it says this, may... The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and faith so that you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. May you be filled with full joy and full peace from the God of hope. You know what they're saying? You cannot be depressed when you have hope. Hope is not looking at the present. Hope is looking at my future. And my hope is not in me because that's the present. My hope is not in my husband or wife. That's the present. My hope is not in the economy or who's the next president. That's not where my hope is. My hope is not in my money. My hope is not in my things. My hope is not in my car. My hope is, come on, my hope is not in my career. My hope is in God. And because my hope is in God, I have fullness of joy. And my joy is stable and is concrete because it's based on faith. It's going to be good. 2022 is going to be my best year. How do you know, Pastor? I, I, because I'm with Jesus. I'm going, we're going to, come on, we're going, we're going to go out there and we're going to help some people know Jesus. If we, come on, we're going to go to work. There's a whole world that's depressed that needs Jesus. I'll end it with this. Having the Lord in your life is being full of joy. The pursuit of happiness is only found in the Lord. This is what Christmas is all about. Joy to the world, Lord, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. I'm rapping right now. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world.
I love that. Joy to the world. Have we lost our message? There's a world that's depressed. They don't know where to find. It's not their fault. Because maybe it's our fault. Maybe we haven't shared the joy of the Lord. Or maybe we haven't received it because the devil's convinced you that depression is who you are and there's no way out of it. But I got good news. Jesus came to give you, give you life in abundance. He's come to set you free. And he wants to give you the joy of the Lord. But look at this last scripture and it says this. 1 John 2, 15. Do, no, no, I'm sorry. No, it's in um, Psalm 1611. It says this. You will show me the way of life. Being with you is to be full of joy. Being with you is to be full of joy. In your right hand, there's happiness forever. This scripture is awesome. It's saying being with the Lord is fullness of joy. In your presence is happiness forever. This is what you need and I need. I need more of the Lord. And as long as I'm with the Lord, and I'm following the Lord, I got joy. Because being with the Lord is joy. It's fullness of joy. And the devil is trying to take you away from church, take you away from God, Take you away from the word. Take you away from fellowship with your brothers and sisters. And he's taking you away from your source of joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Um, yes, yes um, Saturday, no, uh, no, Friday, I went to lunch. And I, get, I went to Applebee's. And as I'm sitting there in Applebee's, there's someone that hears my voice. And they've come to this church. And they just heard my voice. And they said, I think that's Pastor Marco. But I heard it, and I turned around. And when I turned around, she goes, it is Pastor Marco. Right? And, I, and then she says, Pastor, I know you're eating, but you could, can you pray for me? I'm depressed. I'm hurting. I'm confused. I need help, a young lady. I'm going to finish eating, and I'm going to pray for you. Because I want you to understand this. I'm a hope and joy dealer right there in Applebee's so so we stop we stop after I eat I stop by and I'm gonna give her a little something something it's the presence of God so I go stand up we're right there in the middle of the restaurant in the middle of the restaurant people are coming in right there I start praying for her in the in like in the everybody has to walk through here it's not in the corner I didn't say let's go outside let's go right here Right, right, I'm gonna, we're going to get set free right here. We're going to get delivered right here. So I started praying for her. And I started praying, Lord, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that this is her day of freedom right here in Applebee's. Because we know wherever two or three are gathered, you are there, right there in their midst. And, Father, where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. I'm asking you, Lord, set her free from depression. Set her free from discouragement. Set her free. And she just starts crying, crying right there. Ah! And Applebee's. Ain't nobody said nothing. Then they said, take this outside. They were too scared. They'd never seen something like that. But I'm going to tell you this. When you have the joy of the Lord and you got the power of Jesus, when you have that, you come on, you're not, you're not fighting your own depression. You're helping people get set free from their depression. And after she was done, she goes, I go, what's going on now? She goes, I feel free. God spoke to me. I, I got freedom. I got joy. And she just starts smiling and raising her hands, crying and praising God right there in Applebee's. And what God is saying, we're in a war right now and God is raising up a church. He's setting a church free so we can go out there and help others get set free. Give God some praise. Let's stand up. Come on, let's stand up worship God. Now, we're going after souls. And I'm going to tell you this. I love you guys. And I, it'd be messed up that I got the joy of the Lord, and I let you know you could too. That'd be messed up. But could it be you're doing the same thing with everybody around you? It's time for you to get it and go out there and give it. Don't give religion. Don't give rules. 
hey, you need to stop doing this and stop doing that. We're not like Holy Ghost police officers. Hey, stop cussing, bro. You know, that offends me. You know, you know I'm a Christian. I went to the Wayworld Outreach this weekend, and, you know, I, I want to remain holy, you unholy little wicked servant. <laughs> That's not your job. Some Christians have become so holy fied, you can't even handle a sinner cussing around you. Come on, get over it. I could care less. That's a symptom. They just need the joy of the Lord. Come on, they need Jesus. That's all, just like you did. We're to love people into the kingdom. So give them hope. Someone say, give them hope. So now today, I'm going to do a quick prayer. And this is a prayer. If you want freedom from anxiety, depression, confusion, rejection. He's saying, you know what, emotionally, I'm tore up. But I want joy, and I want peace. I want eternal life, and I want salvation. The Bible says in John 10, 10, says the devil's out to, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy your life. But I've come that they may enjoy life and have it to the fullest. God wants you to enjoy life. And some of you guys have been under major attack. And you don't need to do this on your own. We're going to pray for you. You're going to get set free right now. This is going to be your day of emotional healing. And I'm going to teach you how to walk in the joy of the Lord. Come on. I'm going to teach you how to walk in this thing for the rest of your life. Come on. How many want to learn how to walk in this for the rest of your life? I'm not saying I'm not in a fight. I'm not saying I don't have some difficult days. But I do know this. My hope is in the Lord. It's not in nobody else because everybody else will let you down, but not Jesus. So if that's you, you're saying, Pastor, I want joy. I want to get, I'm done. You got to take some action. How bad do you want to get set free and have a new life? If joy can be a new normal, why wouldn't you want it? Do something about it. Let go of your pride. Who cares what people are thinking? It's your deal here. It's your breakthrough. It's your moment. When I count to three, I want you to leave your seat and come up. One, two, three. Just come up. I'm releasing you to come up and get your freedom. I'm releasing you to get set free from your addiction. I'm releasing you. Come on. I'm releasing you. I'm releasing you to get healed of your broken heart. I'm rele Right now, we're releasing you. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. We're praying. We're praying right now. Miracles going to happen. People are going to get set free. This is going to be the moment. Come on. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on. People are coming. People are hearing the good news. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on, you got hurt out there. There was a major loss in your life. Today, Lord, give me my joy back. Sometimes you got to declare it because the pressure will keep you quiet. You got to break out of that. I'm no longer just going to be quiet and be defeated. And shut. I, I'm not going to let the devil shut me down no more. I want to get my smile back. I want to get my hope back. I want to get my dreams back. I want to get my future back to today. They're still coming. I'm, I'm just waiting one more minute. Hallelujah. Come on, a drug can't do it. You're going to have to give up your drugs today. Some of you are going to have to go home and flush your drugs in a toilet, not sell it. It's a lot of money. Who cares? Flush it down the toilet. Break your pipes. Throw away your needles. Throw away your hoochie clothes. Well, just in case, you know, huh? No, get rid of it. Well, just in case. No, you don't know how just in case. Get rid of it. 
get rid of all that nonsense. You're gonna have to get rid of some magazines. You got to get rid of some apps. Some of you guys are gonna have to get rid of your phone because you can't be trusted with a phone right now because you keep going to that that thing, that person, that you gotta get rid of it. Lead me not in temptation. You know, you know, you know why some people can't get a breakthrough? They ain't breaking up with their sin. All they want is a relief. They don't want to get set free. And the only way you're going to get set free, you got to surrender your life totally to Jesus. Don't be no part-timer. Go all in. Come on. You used to serve the devil all in. Why would she serve God all in? You used to be up to 3, three o'clock in the morning. You had runs for all weekend long. You ran away from your family. Come on. Show up to church every time. Get involved. Go into discipleship. Surrender it all. Come on. Say, surrender it all. You'll never have joy until you surrender it all. I'm going to pray right now. There was somebody, one of, the girl that gave the testimony on the a video, she said something real cool. I don't know if you caught it. She goes, don't just give God your mess. Give him your whole life. I love that. You know why some people don't get set free and they don't have no joy? They only want to give God their mess. They don't want to follow him. And see, he'll lead you in the joy. He'll lead you to victory. But you got to be leadable. You can't have two kings. I'm going to say this last thing. What's your name, honey? Tina. Tina. Joy to the world. The, the Lord has come. Let Tina receive her king. What's your name, honey? Jessica. Joy to the world. The Lord has come to you. Let Jessica receive her king. You know what that means? I'm not coming here for a little doctor's visit. I'm coming here for a change of leadership. The devil's not my king. Come on. The, 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 the drug is not my king. The past is not my king. My failure is not my king. My past identity is not my king. Now Jesus is my king. He tells me how to live and how to do that. I follow him. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's write. Are you ready? Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. We're going to declare our victory right now. Say, Jesus, save me. Set me free. I renounce every spirit of depression, anxiety, fear, addiction, rejection, unworthiness, confusion, doubt, unbelief anger, unforgiveness. I let it all go. Set me free, Lord. And fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new person. I'm tired. I need your help. Give me new desires. I thank you, Jesus. You're my Savior. You died on the cross. You suffered. For all the wrong I've done. And you resurrected from the dead. You conquered all my enemies. So I can have a new life. I receive eternal life. Right now. Freedom. Right now. Joy. Right now. Breakthrough. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do something real special. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to command every spirit of darkness to leave right now. One.